But if you do this correctly, it's the best light exercise there is. I was, I didn't really have anything. Well, I was actually going to train legs till I got here. Okay. So I've been, I'm kind of thinking of what I'm going to do. Maybe. If you're going to do legs, I can actually fucking destroy your Oh, I can't, right? I don't think I could. I haven't drank yeah, enough. It would be dangerous. Yeah, I, I would didn't. have to hold back. I didn't drink like that whole, when I start yeah. talking, I don't yeah. drink. You want a water bottle? Uh, I got a little hydro thing there. That's caffeine, man. <laughs> you know there's 500 grams of caffeine in there. Oh, it is? <laughs> or 500 I should have, milligrams. I should have a water then, I guess. Yes. We got some cold ones. <sighs> 25 kilograms or over 50. But the, everyone will think they're just 45s. They're 55s, right? Yeah. Arm straight, arm straight. Back on your heels, on your heels. Heels, heels, hips, hips. You should have pulled in your socks. Those shoes are fucking you all up. I get one more rep. Different shoes, you would have got another rep or in your socks. Yeah, I should have went with socks. Shoes are moving your fucking feet all yeah, over the place. Yeah, I went on my toes at one yeah. of the last reps. One of the things Justin and I were talking about when it comes to rows, especially chest-supported rows, and it's probably going to be even more prominent on uh, bent over barbell rows and so forth, is the number of people who are pulling using their traps and um, rear delts. And I've explained this in other videos, but haven't had somebody with Justin's size to be able to show you how noticeable and how different this actually looks. So go ahead and do a chest supported row, but keep your, yeah, keep your elbows out, you know, and pull. And watch his rear delts and watch his traps. See how all this is contracting up in here? Do another rep. Watch how it initiates all in there. Okay, go ahead and rack it. When I see people come in the gym as visitors or when I visit other gyms, 90% of the time, that's how I see people do rows. Now, yeah, I'm just going to do one where it's going to focus on pulling with the lats. And see now where the tension is in the lats and you're not seeing the rear delts. And this pop, you're seeing this contract. Go ahead and do another rep. So it's pulling down into the lats. It should be a very noticeable difference between that, all right? That's the reason why a lot of people, when they're doing ro so, rows, are not getting their lats to be able to develop. But their rear delts and their traps, you know, are getting built up. But the, the, the reason this distinction needs to be made is if you're a bodybuilder, you need to do it to be able to pull your lats out, to build your lats wider. If you're a power lifter, you want to do it to be able to build your rear delts and traps because you need to have that area strong and isometrically strong because that's what stabilizes the squat, stabilizes the, the spine, you know, and even stabilizes the bench, you know, to be able to hold that position. So if you have a power lifter doing all the rows using their lats, that's I would consider improper. All right, this is a seated, low, seated rope rows uh, leaning forward. This is a DC exercise, Dante Trudeau. And this is a pure lat exercise. And it's kind of uh, counterintuitive because traditionally to contract your lats, you arch your, arch your back. And to really to contract your, your lats maximally, you have to have an arched spine. But the thing is with this is the lats do more than, than just, they, they attach to the spine and to contract it at that insertion, you need an arch back. But they also contract by moving the humerus and moving the humerus like this, which is why a pullover is such a good lat exercise. The problem though is the pullover is kind of locks you into motion like this. What this does is it's kind of like a hybrid pull down uh, pullover. And so you're gonna really get a, a scapular, uh, 
stretch and then contract down but i'm actually going to keep my upper back almost rounded a little bit which is like i said counterintuitive but if you do this correctly it's the best lat exercise there is There you go. Oh man, yeah. I got nothing. It's my oxygen depletion. Yeah, dumbbell rows or bodybuilding and burpees. Uh, I started out just to kind of loosen up because we've been sitting here doing the table talk. I did some uh, cable pullovers, just three sets of about 15 reps. I don't even count reps, probably 15 to 20. Just get blood in my lats, get the get my shoulders uh, loosened up. And then I went over to uh, lat pull downs with the, uh, the kind of loose handles that uh, moved. I don't know what that handle's called, but I loved it. Uh, kind of parallel close grip where I could kind of turn it. Um, and I did those sitting really upright. Uh, and because I always find when I'm pull downs, I have a hard time activating my lats, and I think most people lean back, and it kind of becomes almost like a row, like a like a high pull or face pull. So I try to sit sit upright and, and really pull down into my lower chest, uh, and that's about the last one movement I do that's really focused on contraction. And then I start getting sloppy when I went to deadlifts, <clears throat> and I worked up to one heavy set that I was hoping to get an easy ten, and it was a very hard eight, uh, and with Dave reminding me every rep how terrible my form was, which admittedly is terrible, but I've only recently got back into deadlifting after, I only shouldn't say that long, but after too long of not doing it consistently. Uh, and then, then I went over to a chest supported row, which I, one of my, it's one of my favorite back movements. And the gym I currently train at doesn't have a chest supported row. So anytime I'm at a gym that has one, I make sure to take advantage of it. And I did kind of a warm up set there and then three, three kind of sets to failure, somewhere between eight and 10 reps. I think I got 10, maybe the first two sets. And then came over to uh, bent over dumbbell, two arm dumbbell rows with the kettlebells. Uh, with Dave helped me, we were doing them to try to pull really high and keep my back stabilized. And uh, first set was a little heavy and had to back down a little bit. And even that, that one, I could tell how burnt out I was because uh, I was struggling even, I don't even know what they were, but they weren't very heavy dumbbells. And, and I was struggling to get those up. Then after that, we finished with uh, seated low lean, way lean forward rope rows, uh, which is one of my favorite lat exercises. And, and when it is my favorite, and when I get that uh, really dialed in, unfortunately, another thing about the gym I have is it doesn't have a long, there's no row attachment with a long seat, which is I, the way I really prefer to do it is on a seated row with my feet on the, on the, on the pads and leaning forward, or, or, or if not that, my feet on a long pad on a seated, a seated row. First one we did on kind of a higher box and then Dave bought like a soft squishy box over that was a little lower and that put me right in the groove to, to do kind of, a, uh, kind of a widow maker set. I'm pretty sure I got 20 reps. Uh, they started getting a little sloppy at the end, but I, I usually get, so I pick something that I can do about 10, 10, 12, 13 clean reps. And then I start stretching and kind of letting my muscles relax and then bang out two more start stretching and by the end I'm just kind of like yanking the la you know yanking a rep or two and my form loosens up but I make sure I always get at least 20 reps and that that was it for the for the day it was a uh, good I, was, I think it was a pretty quick workout because I was breathing heavy by the end